Hi everybody, this is Brian Mulligan, and this is my first Autodesk Smoke video blog here at PremiumBeat.com. Now, I always try and get the most out of smoke. Now, there are a few nodes that are inside flame that aren't inside smoke. One of those nodes is called Atomize. Here's what it does. So Atomize will take an image, and then based upon a displacement map, we'll go ahead and fracture that image into a bunch of tiny little atomized particles. These atomized particles exist in full 3D space inside of action, so they interact with anything else within the scene. So, through a little poking around, I found that Atomize is actually available inside of Smoke. All you have to do is know how to turn it on, and this is what I'm going to show you today. Basically, start out with any project. Here's a brand new project for my Premium Beat blog. You've got your user. Create a new user. We'll call this Premium Beat BKM. Atomize. It doesn't matter if it's Final Cut Pro, Flame, or Smoke Classic shortcuts. I'm going to go ahead and use Smoke Classic just because that's what I'm comfortable with. Start out with New Preferences and hit Create. Now that that user has been created, you can see it down here in your list. Go ahead and select it. Now, before you launch Smoke, hit Command Tab. Navigate to the Finder, hit Go, go to Folder, and go to slash USR slash Discrete. This folder is where Autodesk Smoke is installed within your system disk. Go ahead and navigate to the User folder, and then navigate to the folder with the name you just created. Inside here you'll find folders for individual tool preferences inside of Smoke. Let's go to Action, and in Preferences. Here you'll find a file called Action Default Central Bin Tabs.xml. Go ahead and open this file in a text editor. I happen to have Text Wrangler installed, and this is what opens up this XML so I can edit it. Inside here you'll find a, a basic XML scheme showing you the different names for the nodes that already exist inside Smoke. Go down to the second group here, and at the end of node type, go ahead and hit return. Type in node type as seen here, space token equals equals quote atomize a t o m i z e close quote and then forward arrow. Hit return and then close this by typing bracket again backslash node type. Close it. By adding this line in the XML, this will actually turn on the node inside of Smoke. Go ahead and save this file under its current name. Once that's saved, you can go ahead and close, and then go ahead and launch Smoke. All right, so here we are on our project. I've got a couple of clips here that we can use for displacement maps, and then we've got our video clip. So here's our clip in our timeline. Go ahead and add connect effects to it. Go ahead and add an action. Add our two layers. Break that, connect that to there. So then let's go ahead and grab this gradient texture. And we'll connect that into our, and we'll connect that to our media. We'll hide that for give ourselves a little bit more room. Go into action. We don't need our gradient in our scene quite yet. And here is our. And we'll turn the mat off on our image. All right. So if we go into action, go into maps, and select our gradient in our scene, we can go ahead and pull up a displacement map. Now, with a displacement map, if you click on it, you can go ahead and use the luminance values, and we can go ahead and displace our image in Z. Scale this back down. At that point, we basically have an image that's bent with a displacement map. So that kind of works. Now, if you look in the action bin under objects, this is where we added our line for atomize. You can see that down here you have this grayed out icon with Atomize written on it. 
Now, most of the time, grayed out icons inside Smoke are, are read only, and you can't edit them. Atomize happens to be one of those exceptions. You could call it a bug, or in this case, we'll call it a feature. So with our image selected, if I double tap on Atomize, it gets added into the scene attached to the image. You can see that right now, it's already trying to break apart this image. So right now, the point size is the size of 1, and, you, and they are squares. So they're really, really tiny. So I can increase the size of the squares, and you kind of get this mosaic look to everything. I can also change it from squares to round dots, and the images, and now each of the, and now each of the little atomized particles are round dots. So Atomize works in conjunction with displacement mats to split the image up into tiny little pieces. And it also works with the image resolution. So by default, the resolution of every image layer is sick. Now images inside of your action scene are actually textures that are mapped onto flat 2D planes. That's why when you go into extended by cubics or displacement, you can actually displace them in 3D space. So if I increase the resolution of our image, it will actually break apart the image a little bit more. And now we can kind of see what we're looking at. If I start moving the axis along, you can see that as the displacement map comes in, it starts splitting the scene and animating the atoms that are being generated. Once again, this is all in 3D space. All right. So we take a little bit. So if we take a little bit more complex displacement map. Let's go check our media library out. Grab in this other animated texture that I have. So now I've got an animated texture that does a little bit some that does something a little bit more exciting. Go ahead and hide our library again. Go back into action, and now right away, the atomize is working with this displacement map, and since this displacement map is animating, you can see how the images are being split apart and broken up and animates within the displacement map. So you can kind of create some very interesting and funky looks with Atomize attached to your image along with displacement maps. If we look at our scene even more and displace this even further in both Z and maybe even X or Y, you can also dolly the camera in and out of the particles. So then as they animate, you can create some really interesting looks. So that's how Atomize works, and since these images are in 3D space, they react just like everything else in the scene, which means if I start adding lights to the scene, so then if I start adding lights to the scene, so they react accordingly. So you can really create some interesting stylized looks in a very motion graphics kind of way. So I hope you enjoy your newfound atomized node inside of Action, inside of Autodesk Smoke. I'm Brian Mulligan, and I'll be doing more video blogs here at PremiumBeat.com. So stay tuned for those, and if you're looking for great music, check out Premium Beats Music Selections. I'll see you later.